Okay guys, welcome back uh, to another JavaScript video. It may not seem like it right now, but I assure you that it will be. Just a moment, I need to uh, to fix some stuff. Okay, derp, derp, derp. Alright, here we go. So, uh, this, this is more or less just to um, run through all the stuff we have done thus far in the epic. JavaScript program. Now, uh, there's no music this time because, well, for two reasons. First of all, I don't want to get banned from YouTube. That's a huge thing. No, I'm just, I don't know. Uh, most people don't seem to have trouble with, with video game related music, uh, but uh, in the future I'll be using mostly royalty free stuff or something perhaps original. Um, for right now, there's not going to be any music. Uh, the other reason, of course, being that uh, last time the levels were not adjusted correctly. I've done some more sound testing. I have a much better setup this time because I, I've, I've got my old um, my old software setup back more or less. I, I had to contact uh, the uh, the distributor, I suppose, uh, to try and try and get my. Uh, I was having trouble installing the software. Uh, you know, one of those weird restrictions where after three years. You can't uh, you can't download your purchase software anymore. One of those weird things. But anyway, we good now. I got it back. So uh, my sound levels, uh, first of all, from the mic should sound uh, a decent bit better, I would say. And and the other thing is, uh, when I do have some music, I'll be able to adjust the levels a little more uh, accurately. Now the other thing you might notice is this isn't a stream. That's intentional because um, this is just going to be sort of a, not exactly like the methodology of of the code, but more or less just to run through uh, what we've done thus far so that everybody's all caught up because I know that there was some communication issues there was it's pretty difficult to hear in that last video uh, especially so uh, yeah now that I've wasted two minutes of your time let's get into the code um, <laughs> so the um, the first thing that we notice here is that I've, I've just done the styling um, for the web page itself uh, I've got a background color set here um, I've got the font font family set to either impact or just a sheriff font uh, and then uh, yeah I've got a different color for like the main text uh, and that's bold italic uh, or it's bold italicized it's got a slightly larger um, size than like your normal text and I have it um, as a percentage just in case you know someone comes in on like a smartphone or something I don't want it to be like 500 pixels and just take up their whole screen so that you know this seems fine to me it's just relative to the uh, the size of other elements on their on their page, and then this just centers it, uh, sets the margin to the left and the margin to the right of uh, of whatever has this particular class um, to automatic so that they're equal, and then it just uh, it just aligns the text to the center. That's all, and then this changes the color of the uh, text for the cards and takes away the italics for the cards because I, I find that it's a little easier to read like that. Um, so the next thing is getting into the actual code. Uh, all we do here is declare a bunch of variables. Um, the most notable is still in winner, um, which right now does nothing. Uh, um, uh, still in is gonna um, is going to uh, track whether or not you've busted. Um, dealer still in tracks whether or not the dealer is busted, and game going means well has have any of the victory conditions been satisfied? If so, then that's false, um, and it just, all that does is prevents um, like the hit stick and double down functions from uh, from working if the game is already over because of course we don't want that. Uh, game start all this does is um, well let's go down to the HTML first. So as you can see, I've got a couple of different divisions here. One uh, to store the player's hand, one to store the dealer's hand, and one to store the controls. All game start does is uh, changes the controls so that uh, the player has access to the hit stick and double down functions. Um, and it also causes the dealer's hand to hit once before the player starts. Uh, then when the player starts, it just hits for the player twice. That's pretty uh, self-explanatory. We'll come back to the dealer. Um, double down, we'll come back to that. Victory check, come back to that. 
reset reset all reset does is change is sets all the variables to their default values and uh, sets the controls back to just the start button uh, which activates the the game start function um, stick we'll come back to that let's go down to hit okay so hit has this has this variable extra variable here called double down basically if the game is going then it'll allow the player to hit all it does is it calls two functions ran suit and random card um, and then it, these this basically returns a random suit and a random card as you as you'd expect the player hand gets updated with the cards actual text uh, or like the, the the physical display value if you will well not physical but whatever uh, the, it gets updated with the display value uh, which is returned in well a uh, random card returns an array itself uh, with three values the first value is the display value that we show the player uh, the second value at index one is the hard value of the card itself and then index two is a soft value so then we just update the player hand value so that we can track that and uh, we also include the suit in a different uh, array and then we have the player card number increase by one and um, so yeah so that the next time that this executes it'll move the index forward one uh, now um, this is here so if the player isn't still in um, or sorry if still in so what this means is if still in is true that means that the player hasn't busted because we we check that still in equals bus check um, so if the player is still in that'll be true so then this will resolve to false and false um, or false and true it doesn't matter so this whole thing resolves to false if that's the case and it doesn't force the player to stick however um, if the player does bust and he's on a double down we don't want him to stick here because we already said that he was gonna stick in the double down function so we don't want him to stick twice that's all that does uh, and then once again all this does is prevent the player from hitting if the game is already over um, the next thing that we want to look at is the stick function so if the game is going all we gotta do is update the player numbers so that we push the player index forward by one uh, and then say if the player number is greater than or equal to the number of players playing start the dealer turn because we know at that point that we're already done um, so yeah and then it just stores all the players relevant data in in another array called player index um, and then if that's not the case though if if we have more players playing what we want to do is just uh, set all the relevant player data to zero because we've already stored it somewhere and just um, start the new player so run player start that'll hit for the new player twice and we can start him up like that okay um, the next thing we're gonna look at is uh, the dealer function which is all the way up here so we'll do victory check last and that'll be it come on baby there we go alright so yeah we're gonna check that the game is still going but we'll talk about that a little later so basically while the dealer the dealer's hand value is less than 16 he's gonna keep hitting so that's the hard value of his hand and I put in this provision uh, I um, in an earlier uh, off-screen segment where I was intending to record but unfortunately didn't um, and all this does is says if the dealer's hand value uh, soft value of his hand is a great is a is greater than 16 and well it's if it's between 16 and 21 uh, he can he's he can feel free to stick there I'm not sure if that's how they do it in a casino or not the only rule I know for a casino is if the dealers hard value is above 16 he sticks no matter what or at least that's how the casino well I'm not I, I'm not a casino goer man I've never been to a casino but I have had um, professional blackjack dealers at like um, you know my graduation when I graduated high school and stuff like that when they when they had that and uh, you know they've been around and stuff and uh, yeah, anyway, I don't know. So that, that seems to be a trend. Um, and the other thing that this checks is just to make sure the dealer hasn't busted already and that the game is indeed still going. And if that if all those things are true, then the dealer can hit. So if either this or this is false, 
the dealer will stick. So, assuming the game is still going, and the dealer's still in, then we'll alert the player that the dealer does indeed intend to stick. And, um, otherwise, we're going to, uh, we're going to just do a victory check now. Um, so, like, regardless, uh, it, well, I mean, if the game isn't going, we still need to do... We've already, if the game isn't going, then we've already done a victory check and there's no reason to do all this. The dealer's already won. Um, if the dealer hasn't won already and there's someone still in, then we need to do a victory check um, just to see who's won. So now we're going to talk about the three different kinds of victory checking that we do here. So the first one is right here. This one uh, has index 2, so why don't I just go down to the victory check function. and. Uh, and we can uh, we can talk about that. So uh, dealer, double down, victory check. So victory check of J. So J is what we're looking for. So if J equals zero, or J equals two, we're gonna just check and see if people are still in. So for I in player index, uh, X equals player index of I. So like you know player index zero would be player one. And then I happen, I happen to define X of I to be that player's still in um, variable. So, um, so yeah, I did that earlier. That's the index that I stored it at in that particular array. So then, if any players are still in, we're going to say c equals 1, because, you know what, it, that's what it should be. So if c equals 0, we know everybody's out, the dealer has won instantly, and we return false to tell the dealer that the game is no longer going, and he's won. But, uh, if j equals 2, equals exactly two, then we want to return true right there, break off. We don't want we don't want to know which player's won yet, because the dealer isn't finished. We just want to return true to let the dealer know that the game is still going. Now, if j equals zero, which it will after the dealer sticks, this won't execute and it'll, it'll keep going. Um, so what we want to do then is just, um, basically this goes through and it checks, so if the dealer's hand value uh, for the soft value is less than 21 it's just gonna make sure that the player if the player's hand is greater than uh, the dealers hard value and soft value then um, he gets put into the who won uh, array um, if he ties he goes into the, into the who tied array and if anything else happens then the, the player must have lost so all the other players go into the who lost array then all this, um, this right here is just in case the dealer's soft value is above 21, because it would it would be impossible to win uh, if he had a soft value above 21, because you know you'd be busted and yeah anyway. Regardless, um, so then the next part just alerts you know who won, uh, who tied, and who lost. Uh, Sorry about that guys, I just had to take a quick phone call. But anyway, jumping right back into things, I believe I believe that I was talking about um these these specific for loops. Um so after it figures out who won, who tied and who lost based on the criteria in the, uh that was defined above, um all it does is just displays um the number like the player number um for for each person who won, each person who tied and each person who lost. So like all those numbers are stored in these arrays right here, who won, who tied, and who lost. And then it just increments those by one because, you know, we start in the code, it's it starts at player zero. We want to display um, player one, we want to start from one basically, so display player one um, at index zero, and yeah, so on. So that's fine. This next part is also pretty straightforward. Um, so the only time that this that we run victory check of one is if the dealer busts and all this does is check which players are still in that is which players haven't busted yet and each of those players win by default um, otherwise they already know that they've lost because you know they busted so yeah that's it um, so that's the whole code uh, thank you guys very much for watching I hope you've enjoyed if you have any questions or comments, I encourage you, and in fact, I implore you, <laughs> to leave those comments in the uh, the comment section below. I will read them, and uh, yeah, until then, 
Thanks so much for watching and have a fantastic day.